I'm Christian from Cornell University. And I'm Dennis Pesca from the University of Maryland. We're going to discuss how to find not only when somebody is lying, but when a victim believes they're being lied to, revealing the internal state hidden beneath the surface. Because it takes two to lie, one to lie, and one to listen. We use the board game Diplomacy to understand the language of deception in extended online communications. Our dataset is annotated by both the sender and the receiver for deception. This annotation illuminates the difference between a deceptive statement and a truthful one. We gather 17,289 messages across 12 games. Each message can range in length from one word to multiple paragraphs. Each game requires a specialized user base and can last over a month. Using this data, we train baseline and neural models to detect deception. Our best model approaches human performance. However, we find that both humans and machines fail to detect most lies. Without further ado, we'll now discuss diplomacy and provide examples of these conversations. Hi folks, I'm Chris Martin. I'm a former president of the North American Diplomacy Federation and I've been playing diplomacy for more than 20 years. What is diplomacy? Diplomacy is a seven player board game set on a map of Europe at the turn of the 20th century. Players control multiple units and each turn they move each of those units simultaneously. Conflict is decided through superior force. So because all the players initially have approximately the same amount of force, they have to coordinate their moves with each other in order to succeed. The rules concerning negotiations of that coordination are very clear. Anything goes. Players may make any promises that they like, and they are under no circumstances obligated to fulfill those promises. Because players can only succeed by growing at the expense of other players, they are highly incented to develop a strong sense of whether or not someone is telling the truth to them or whether they are lying when they are negotiating. Diplomacy is consistently ranked as one of the best board games of all time. Its combination of strategy, tactics, negotiations, and the complete absence of any random luck in the game make it one of the most challenging and satisfying games to play. Today, more than 10,000 people play Diplomacy, both online, over email, and in face-to-face -face games. We will describe the annotation process of who is lying and who believes they're being lied to in a moment. But to help understand the task and the data, here's a reenactment with commentary from a representative interaction between diplomacy players. After several years of successful cooperation, an alliance between Italy and Germany begins to break down. The reason? Plans coordinated between Germany and England had failed. It appeared that someone had leaked the plans to the French. Truly, I don't want you in England to fight. I'm not trying to break you up. I was the one who suggested that you take Paris. I want you guys to work together with me against France. This message was perceived as truthful by Germany, but he was deceived. Italy lied. Despite believing her, Germany decided to ask England directly. Did Italy tell you about the plan? So there's something I want to know, and I'll keep my agreement no matter what the answer is here, but did you in any way indicate to Italy that you knew or suspected the channel plot last year? No, he revealed the channel plot to me uh, without asking. Uh, this was after he told me about it. Well, that makes no sense, because after I revealed it to you, Italy reiterated to me that they really did not want you to know about it. Armed with this new information, Germany pushes back against Italy. You say you don't want us to fight, yet you betrayed both of our confidence with you in a way that makes us distrust each other? I really don't think that's a fair description. You guys both wanted to attack each other. I encouraged you both to keep working together. Caught in her initial lie, Italy doubles down and lies again. But now, Germany is wise to her and changes sides.
Hopefully this convinces you that diplomacy is a good test bed for studying deception and long-term relationships. In the game from which those messages came, Italy had in succession lied to several opponents to get an upper hand, and then ultimately backstabbed England. When all the remaining players had formed a coalition, Italy cleverly proposed a fake draw, and the ensuing chaos caused Italy to amass a large amount of lies, as well as to get an upper hand. Italy concluded the game with the most amount of supply centers, which can be thought of as points in the context of diplomacy. In the remaining part of the presentation, we're gonna walk through the study setup, the statistics of the data, the analysis that we conducted, as well as models that we built. To run a diplomacy study, you need diplomacy players. We work with the in-person and the online communities to design our study, as well as to find participants for it. Additionally, we recruit participants with no past diplomacy experience to make our conclusions more broadly linguistically applicable. From a compensation perspective, we reward players simply for participating and completing the game. However, we have a small incentive to tell the most successful lies as well as to actually win the game. Players that are deemed good participants are asked to play again in future games. From a technical perspective, we create a custom-made Discord bot that records messages as players send them and allows the players to provide annotations on messages they send as well as they receive in real time. This syncs up with an online platform called Backstabber, which is a popular choice in the community. Defining what a lie is is important for the study. We provide players with the definition that a lie is something that is false, told with the intent to deceive. This is the first such available data set of diplomacy press data. Our messages are on average 21 words long and they're distributed along a zips curve. We have an unequal class distribution. Roughly 95% of our messages are truthful, which means detecting a lie is a difficult task. This is intuitive since a lie told every other time would no longer be believable. Since we have annotations by both the sender and the receiver, we can study not only what lies contain, but how they're perceived. In our training data, roughly 11,000 messages are truthful ones perceived as truthful, roughly 500 are truthful messages perceived as lies, roughly 500 are lies perceived as truthful, and only 65 lies are actually caught. We provide an example from each one of our quadrants. In the bottom right quadrant, we have an example of a caught lie, in which case, sincerity is not actually sincere. I sincerely wanted to work with you, but I took your silence last turn as an ominous sign. By using a bag of words logistic regression, we were able to determine what words were associated with lies. Ironically, words related to sincerity, sincerely, frankly, words that could be used in an apology, accusation, fallout, alternatives, were associated with being a lie. In contrast, casual words, dude, words associated with reconnaissance, FYI, and words associated with time, were more likely to be predicted as truthful by the model. In building our models, we begin with baselines. A random distribution as well as a majority class model are good sanity checks. Our majority class model shows that our data set is imbalanced. Hence, using accuracy would not be a good choice. We use macro F1, which incentivizes our models to learn not only the truthful statements, but also gives a heavy penalty for not learning lies. We begin building our logistic regression on top of past diplomacy work. We use a list that we call harbingers, which has linguistic features. We extend this analysis with a bag of words model. In addition, diplomacy provides us with a feature called power imbalance, uh, which stems from the supply centers in the game of diplomacy. We incorporate this as a feature within our logistic regression model. For our neural models, we begin with a baseline LSTM. We extend our model by incorporating past message context, as well as power information. This proves to be our best model in predicting actual lies. 
we find that most of the information gained, at least as evaluated by the F1 accuracy metric, comes from the message itself rather than additional information. In conclusion, here's what you should have learned from our presentation. First, this is a conversational data set structured around deception and long-term relationships. Second, detecting a lie is difficult for both humans and machines. This is because lies follow an imbalanced class distribution. Third, this press data could be used for building a bot that has a strategic approach. Additionally, you could create a human in the loop setup, which does better than humans alone. Last, since this is based around the board game, there are no privacy concerns relative to similar data sets. Thank you for watching our presentation. Here's a link to our code as well as our data. We hope you enjoyed watching our video as much as we enjoyed filming it.